The primary thrust of conservation for Bongo is protecting the wild population, studying the wild population, empowering the people who have that stewardship authority and responsibility in Kenya. But as conservation programs like this go on, we realize that we can't rely on just a single approach or a single route to conserving a species. What we're really talking about is the species as a resource. So what the repatriation phase taught us is that we have to manage the bongo antelope as a resource for the long term. And since the historical success for reproduction and for management has been in North America, and there's been a very robust and healthy captive population here, it's, it's vital that we keep that resource managed in a responsible way and that we use those animals sustainably to support the field effort. And that means not just having animals in conservatories and zoos and ranches, but being able to have them managed in such a way that they are meaningful representatives going back to, uh, to the managed population in the wild and then ultimately back to the wild. So what we started uh, over the last couple of years was an expansion of the original bongo management program which started in the 70s and this expansion is Florida based and it starts here with rare species in that we're looking at large ranches, privately owned ranches, that can serve as management centers for bongo populations. And what we're doing is we're seeding these centers with some of our very best breeding animals, a diversity of ages and, um, and a nice composition of males and females so that these ranches become propagation centers for bongo. That's important because ultimately when we need to send more animals back to Kenya, we want to draw on a hardy group of animals that have a known history, good record keeping, animals that we can trace back to the successes of this program some 20 years ago and be able to say, okay, these are the animals that are gonna do a good job, they're gonna perform well, and, and we know that they're here, they're, they're within reach. It'll be, it'll be so much more efficient than trying to find animals when you need to move them uh, rather than you know, knowing that they're nearby. On, on top of that is that as a management tool, it's a tremendous uh, vehicle for attracting philanthropic support for the Bongo Surveillance Program because these ranches are high net worth ranches. These are ranches that don't have to make money. They don't have to buy and sell bongo in order to sustain themselves. We're talking about ranches that exist because of the owner's love of wildlife and they want to be part of this very exciting program. And that's something that you, that you really can't put uh, you know, specifics on in terms of dollars and cents. It's not a business transaction, it's an intangible. We're talking about people who care enough to invest their property, and their, their teams of people uh, to work on this species and to learn from our experience and to manage this population with us so that they know they're, they're doing something more than just housing animals. They're actually part of the solution. And it's not a solution that's gonna happen in two years, or three years, or five years. This is an open-ended thing. It's an open-ended equation where they're part of the solution forever. And, and, that's, and that's a tremendously exciting thing uh, because it's a fresh opportunity for, for new players. But it's also exciting for us because it allows us to, to take so much information and so much experience uh, and, and to translate that. And then to ultimately use that outreach as a feedback loop back to Kenya so that they know, the people on the ground know, that look, this is a collective effort. We've got a lot of people working together. And, it, and it's a very good thing. We care about your wildlife, you care about your wildlife. It is a world's resource, and it's vital that we put it back in the wild. You know, conservation is about bringing people together, people who care about wildlife, people who want to make a difference, people who want to save nature. And this evening is a wonderful example of that, where we've got artists from all sorts of media, from fine arts and sculpture and photography and jewelry, donating their efforts and their wonderful talents for this great cause. And you all are here to enjoy their work and take some of it home, but also with the broader purpose of helping out a very, very worthy cause. And that is putting those finances right back into helping nature in a real tangible way. Your money doesn't go towards big salaries. It doesn't go towards indirect costs. It doesn't go towards overhead. It doesn't go towards marketing goes to making a difference with animals every day. And when you, when you see how many of these animals have been lost over the years and how much habitat's been lost, 
and the Kenyan people are just desperate to have it come back. They, they really care. But it's a very difficult situation. You've got a poor country, you've got a lot of people, you've got pressures on the environment, and in order for this one animal to get that kind of attention, it takes a lot of work. But uh, the bottom line is the, you know, the world should care, and, and we should have done a much better job than, and I'm talking about we in the U.S. as the funders for conservation. I'm talking about the NGOs and the agencies that have been responsible for Africa conservation for, for decades. We all should have been doing a much better job to keep it from getting as desperate as it is. Um, we should do better, we can do better, and we're going to do better. Uh, it's not over yet. At least they're not extinct in the wild. If that were the case, we'd have a real mess on our hands because it's very hard to put something back when you've lost it. It's much easier to manage it while it's still there, give it a chance while it's still there. And, and the perfect answer is that, you know, if the wild population came back on its own and we never had to reintroduce an animal from a captive situation, that would be the best outcome. I don't think that's likely. I think we're going to be reintroducing animals sustainably for many, many years because the wild population is going to need a boost. It's not going to be able to come back on its own. And that's why we're doing this.